Today is the 16th of April 2020. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. If you are joining us for the very first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of a mixture of prayer, scripture and music. It's easy to pick up as we go along. Don't forget, if you want to download the script, smash the download the script button in the show notes, you'll get a PDF of today's episode. If you want to support Walking Away, then the link to our giving page is in the show notes. Smash that button. We would appreciate any support that you could give us. And then finally, if you want more information about the podcast or me, head to rayborrett.co.uk. All the information is there. We always start each episode of Walking Away with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? God, you have been at work in this world from that first day of creation up until today. So many lives down through the centuries have been shaped by your hands. People going beyond the possible, walking by faith and thus changing the course of history, in ways large or small. We call them saints, but it was you behind them all. You are an awesome God. We confess, O Lord, that we are tempted to place your saints into an unreachable box, so good and holy that their experience does not touch our own. If anything, we are full of holes rather than holy, and selfish motives accompany all our acts of goodness. Still, you take our tattered and torn lives, and sow together a holy people. You make us into saints. Thank you for the one in and through whom our lives become holy, your Son Jesus Christ. He is like fragrant oil which overflows its container, soothing and healing our wounds and consecrating our lives to your impossible possibilities. Because of him, our hands are never empty, and because of him we can come together today to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Philippians 4.13 I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. Before you ask, there isn't an echo in here. I want us to stop and think for a second what that means. Paul is writing to the Philippians in this verse, and it's in in context, it's part of a thank you note that Paul is making for the gift they sent. And it's in that context that Paul is talking about being content. He knows what it's like to be full and hungry, to have enough and to be in need, and he can face it all through the power that Christ gives him. Now, how many of us can say the same? How many of us can honestly say that we are so content with the lot that God has given us that we can stand it all? In these challenging times, Jesus gives us something drawn, his power. And as we've read so many times in the Gospels so far this year, Jesus had nothing, and yet he is the most powerful, the most influential person in history. Because power does not equate to material wealth and material satisfaction. What Paul is talking about here, the power of Jesus is the reliance on Jesus for all our needs. All of our needs. Period. When we get that, then we can join Paul in saying these words, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's readings, we read about Jesus healing a blind man on the Sabbath and all the repercussions as a result.
Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Father, we ask that you open our hearts and minds to your word. Help us to see and hear what you would expect of us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the Good News Translation, and we're beginning with John 9. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. His disciples asked him, Teacher, whose sin caused him to be born blind? Was it his own or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, His blindness has nothing to do with his sins or his parents' sins. He is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in him. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light for the world. After he said this, Jesus spat on the ground and made some mud with the spittle. He rubbed the mud on the man's eyes and told him, Go and wash your face in the pool of Siloam. This name means sent. So the man went, washed his face, and came back seeing. His neighbors then, and then the people who had seen him begging before this, asked, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, He is the one, but others said, No, he isn't, he just looks like him. So the man himself said, I am the man. How is it that you can now see? they asked him, and he answered, The man called Jesus made some mud, rubbed it on my eyes, and told me to go to Siloam and wash my face. So I went, and as soon as I washed, I could see. Where is he? they asked. I don't know, he answered. Then they took from the Pharisees the man who had been blind. The day that Jesus had made the mud and cured him of his blindness was the Sabbath. The Pharisees then asked the man again how he received his sight. He told them, He put some mud on my eyes. I washed my face, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, The man who did this cannot be from God, for he does not obey the Sabbath law. Others, however, said, how could a man who is a sinner perform such miracles as these? And there was division among them. So the Pharisees asked the man once more, You say he cured you of your blindness, but what do you say about him? He is a prophet, the man answered. The Jewish authorities, however, were not willing to believe that he had been blind and could now see, until they called his parents and asked him, Is this your son? You say that he was born blind. How is it then that, that he can see now? His parents answered, We know that he is our son, and we know that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he was now able to see, nor do we know who cured him of his blindness. Ask him. He's old enough and can answer for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, who had already agreed that anyone who said he believed that Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. That is why his parents said, He is old enough. Ask him. A second time they brought back the man who had been born blind and said to him, Promise before God that you will tell the truth. We know that this man who cured you is a sinner. <laughs> I don't know if he's a sinner or not, the man replied. One thing I do know, I was blind and now I see. What did he do to you, they asked. How did he cure you of your blindness? I have already told you, he answered, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Maybe you too would like to be his disciples. They insulted him and said, you are that fellow's disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for that fellow, however, we do not even know where he comes from. The man answered, What a strange thing that is. You do not know where he comes from, but he cured me of my blindness. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He does listen to people who respect him and do what he wants them to do. Since the beginning of the world, no one has ever heard of a man giving sight to a person born blind. Unless, unless this man came from God, he would not be able to do a thing. They answered, You were born and brought up in sin, and you are trying to teach us. And they expelled him from the synagogue. When Jesus heard what happened, he found the man and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Tell me who he is, sir, so I can believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have already seen him, and he is the one who is talking to you now. I believe, Lord, the man said, and knelt down before Jesus. Jesus said, I came to this world to judge, so that the blind should see and those who see should become blind. Some Pharisees who were there with him heard them say this and asked him, Surely you don't mean that we are blind too? Jesus answered, If you were blind, then you would not be guilty. But since you claim that you can see, this means that you are still guilty. 
we're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after music, we're going to say our prayers for today. Before we say our prayers, just a reminder that if you would like us to pray for you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email, our voicemail service. As always, we would love to hear from you. We would love to pray for you. Let us know if there's anything we can pray for. We're still praying for Rebecca and Ben. Um, Rebecca is still in contact with Ben, who is still in prison. We're praying that God would work a miracle there. Oh Lord, you are our shepherd. And we should not be in want, but so often we struggle to be content. And we do want. Forgetting that you have graciously provided us with every spiritual ble blessing in Christ. And everything we need for life and godliness. Thank you for often not giving us what we want, because our desires would draw our hearts from being satisfied in you. Help us to be content in you, with what you've given us. And not to be focused on what we want what the world tells us we should have. Protect us from coveting possessions or people, talent or influence, relationships or prestige. Keep our hearts from being anxious for what we don't have, and make us thankful for the numerous gifts that you've already given. According to your word and steadfast love, Lord, fill us with the joy and satisfaction of contentment in Christ. Help us to learn to be content in any situation like Paul and to quickly reject all that dwells beneath the surface of our coveting. We ask you to continually bring to mind your faithful pr provision for all our needs, that Christ died, that in Christ we are free to be content and to live righteously, and that godliness with contentment is the greater gain. Lord, may we be humbled and changed by the ultimate example of contentment, of Christ becoming poor in order that we might become rich, and being content to go to the cross to fulfill your will, to rescue a people of, for himself who can be free from discontent and zealous for good works. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way. All the details for today's episode can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for the press. If you want to partner with Walking the Way, if you'd like to donate towards the project, that would be amazing. We are looking at upgrading all our equipment, so any donations would be fantastic. Please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And for more information, head to rayborrett.co.uk. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Don't forget, you can also listen to us on TuneIn and YouTube. My name is Ray, and so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way. Thank you.